it is I, Taru Hunter. Taru! And we're back again in another episode of ARC Survival Evolved on ARC Genesis. So guys, this episode's going to be a little bit of a departure from our normal episodes. I've had a lot of people asking me on the Discord, on TBF's Discord, about how I did my breeding to get my Rexes up as high as I did. And understand, I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination in ARC breeding, but I have been doing it a lot recently and I've figured some things out and I wanted to share them with you. So that's going to be today's episode slash discussion slash teaching time with Taru Hunter. So guys, if you liked today's episode, please remember to hit that like button. If you're new here, please subscribe. And as always, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. So we're going to use our lovely Procomphodons here as our example. We had two pretty good level wild parents. So we have the female. She was level 179 tamed out. And we have the male. He was level 167 tamed out. Now, the way that you're going to figure out the best stats that you can have for breeding is with <laughs> D hunts playing outside. Um, is you're gonna look at each of the parents' stats and you're gonna find which one is better. So in the case of these Procomphodons, right, we have the stats for the female of 25 in her uh, stamina stat, 31 in oxygen, which is kind of a wasted stat for most things, but not too bad. 29 in food again somewhat a wasted stat but not really because it takes longer for them to get hungry and then they use less food and when they're babies they have less of a chance to starve to death and then 32 in weight which depending on your dino that's a stat that you're definitely going to focus on especially for your gatherers things like your dodics and your ankies because the more weight it has the less trips you have to make melee is an 18 which obviously for most dinos melee is a stat that you're going to want to focus on Speed is 23, and the health is 20. So, unfortunately, although this female is a much higher level than the male that we have, some of her very important stats aren't great. Namely, melee and health are pretty low for what we're looking for. So, when we look to the male, we can see that he has a 30 melee, which is incredible. But we're going to go through the stats again real quick here. So, he has a 13 in his stamina, a 19 in his oxygen... 26 in food, 21 in weight, 30 in melee, 29 in movement speed, which is also really good, and a 28 in health. So on his side, he got a lot of the stats that the female didn't have. So when we look at what the best possible baby we could get out of the combination of the two of these, it's going to have a 25 in the stamina, a 31 in oxygen, 29 in its food, a 32 in its weight, a 30 melee, a 29 movement speed, and a 28 health. So, going back a little bit, how are levels in ARC decided? How do they come into existence? Well, you take all of the levels of each individual stat and you add them together. So, in the case of the Procomptodon, the 25 plus 31 plus 29 plus 32, plus 18, plus 23, plus 20 equals 178. And then obviously all dinos start at level one. So you add one to whatever your total is. So that all being said, between the two of these, if we had a baby with the max level of stats, just stats, we're not talking mutations yet, just stats, it's going to be 25 plus 31 plus 29 plus 32 plus 30 plus 29 plus 28 equals 204 plus 1 equals the highest level baby that you could get out of the two of these together. If it got all the best stats from both parents would be a 205. Now again, that takes a lot of breeding and that takes a lot of time and a lot of people aren't willing to wait for all of that. I totally get that. But if you are working on your lines and you want to have really, really awesome, really, really powerful dinos, that's the way you're going to go about it. You're going to breed and breed and breed this couple together until you get the stats you want. The other way to do that is through their offspring. So I have a couple of offspring here. We're going to look at these two. And that's a roll red. That's not going to be helpful. All right. So we're going to look at these two just for a second. So this one right here, okay, obviously has its dad's stamina, 
has its mom's oxygen, has its mom's food, has its dad's weight, has its dad's melee, movement speed, and its mom's health. So overall, it got about half of the good stats that we're looking for. So it's higher than the level of the dad, but it's lower than the level of the mom. Now, let's take a look at this one here. We got a 197. So this one got the higher speed, the higher food, the higher, uh, the higher oxygen, the higher food, the higher weight, the higher melee, the higher movement speed, but the lower health. That's the only stat that this particular dino is missing points on. So when it comes to breeding, we're going to want to breed this one back to the dad because the dad has that higher stat that we're looking for. This one, we're not going to get much better of a level out of it because it already has two of the three of the dad stats. If we were desperately looking for a health stat one, we could breed her back to the dad. But as of where she is right now, not the best choice. This one, on the other hand, a 197, has all the stats we're looking for except for the health stat. So at, at, for this one, breeding her back to her dad makes a lot more sense. Then we also double the chance of getting that quote unquote perfect baby, right? So obviously that's what we're going to do eventually down the road. Now let's look at some other things. That's just looking at the female side of things. Now we also have males that come out of the breeding lines. This one in particular has a lot of our desired stats. The only stat that it's currently not the best on is weight. So instead of breeding our mom back to the dad of this guy, we might breed the mom to the son because she has the weight stat that we're looking for. So we could get that 32 instead of that 21. So we have a better chance of getting a better baby out of that particular pairing. So breeding mom with son and dad with daughter, we have a better chance of getting our quote unquote perfect breeding pair, which is eventually where you want to go. Now, Mutations. I get it. Mutations are crazy. They're random. You never know when they're going to pop up. Sometimes they come really early on. Sometimes they come never. It's, it's always an adventure, right? So looking at our 193, she has a paternal mutation. So that means this particular dino has a stat of the dads that got mutated. That's really important to remember when you're talking about eventually going down your breeding lines. Paternal and maternal are very important to remember because if you're wanting to introduce a new dino into your lines to kind of quote unquote reset your mutation lines, you have to know which side you're bringing it in on. So in this case, the stat that was mutated was the weight stat, but it said it was a paternal. Interesting. Hmm. So it got a mutation from the dad, but the mutation was actually on one of the mom's stats, which was the weight stat. So she now has a 34 in her weight. So if you go to show ancestors, you see on the patrilineal side of things. Oh, you know what? I bet you. Do I have another one with a mutation? Nope. Okay. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Either way. She has a mutation. So that mutation is going to carry through. And when you breed her to another Procomptodon, it's going to have mutations on both patrilineal and matrilineal sides now because she's the mom. So if you want to keep mutations to one side or the other, you can only breed that gender. So if it's on the patrilineal side, you can only breed it into your lines if it's also a male. If it's matrilineal, obviously only breed it if it's a female. And once your mutations hit 20 out of 20, there is no longer a chance for a random mutation to occur anymore. So having a super high mutation number is actually a bad thing. It means that there can no longer be any mutations that are new in your lines. So the goal of breeding is to get as close to that perfect critter without mutations. You, you can keep the, the mutated ones out to the side, kind of keep them you know, in your back pocket until you're ready to incorporate them into your lines. But until that point, you know, you definitely want to try to get as close to your perfectly bred one as possible without incorporating mutations. Now, I did not do that with my Rex lines. 
And I'm, you know, a little upset that I didn't do that, but I had gotten some really cool mutations color-wise early on. And that's something that I really wanted to continue on into my Rex lines. And so the mutations got a little bit of out of hand. So I'm gonna actually show you guys just how out of hand the mutations got on my Rexes. Cause I think that's something that is good to see too. So I need the 262, come here. So I got all the way up to level 262 on my Rex here. Th that is as high as it's gonna get. But if we come up here and we check out, if we show here, she is 406 on this side and 392 on this side. So a ridiculous number. But again, remember that all that means is that she can no longer get random mutations to bump her stats. So speaking of mutations, mutations always come with a color change and they apply to a singular stat. They will add two points to that particular stat. So, in the case of our lovely mutated Procomptodon, she got two extra points here in her weight. And you can see she's got an orange underbelly. As you can see, neither one of the parents have orange anywhere on them. Now, sometimes this particular mutation occurs and you can't see it. That's where something like having the uh, Dino Storage is super handy. Because when you have them in their soul balls and you scroll over them, you can see the colors. So you can see here, she has 64, 41, 26, or 41, 96, blah, 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 whatever. But I believe it is the 510 that is the um, color mutation. Now, on my Rex. Well, Rexes are also a bad example because they tend to show everything. Um, some dinos have a lot of stuff. Oh, my aloes. My aloes are a perfect example. So let me go find where my aloes are. I think they're in here. Do, 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 do. Unhelpful. Uh, I need like a. Brr, what level were they? They were in the high 180s. Alright, that's not going to be useful. I need one that has lots of. There we go. Okay. So, this guy. As you can see, he's supposed to have some bright yellow somewhere on him. But also, as you can see, there's no bright yellow. Uh, that, that yellow in his upper part is not the color that we're talking about because even a regular one has that yellow. This is just him being an x aloe. The only colors that really express on the x aloes that I have seen so far are three. And the big ones are, if we ball you up, the first and the last stat are super important. And I believe one of the middle ones, one of the ones on this guy that's 29, is also one that's showing. So the first and the last, the first color is the top color. The last color is the color that runs underneath his body. So those are the colors that really express on aloes. So you're not always going to see the color mutation, but know that it is there. And that's a really good way to know if you got a mutation. Another way you can always check is if you pop your dino out. and go into their show ancestors, it will tell you if they have mutations or not. Something to take into consideration. So that's basics of breeding for super crazy levels. So I hope this wasn't too boring for you guys. Just remember, you want to, honestly, I have a little notebook. I make a list of all the stats of the best parents that I can get. I basically create the ideal baby from what the the choices I have for parents. And from there, you wanna breed for those highest stats. Until you get those, you really don't wanna be incorporating a ton of mutations into your line, because all that's gonna do is make it so that once you have those perfect stats, then they're not going to be able to be mutated the same as they might have been. Now, in the case of my Procomptodons, I probably will incorporate my female that has the mutation into my line for the simple reason that the highest stat for that particular spot was mutated. So in the case of this, the 32 was the higher of the weight stats and that got mutated to a 34. 
So I would, I do want to incorporate that into my lines. Eventually that's going to make my lines better. But if it were the case where it mutated the 21 instead of the 32, then that only made it a 23. And a 23 is not the stat I'm looking for. Now, the color might be super awesome that comes along with it. And in that case, you can add those colors back in after you've bred for the much better stats. But that's the way you want to go. So guys, that is breeding in a nutshell. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. If you want me to show you uh, the breeding process more in depth, I'll be happy to do that as well. I just will need some time to uh, get some <laughs> get some babies going. <laughs> and yeah, and again, I am not an expert by any means, but I thought that this particular set of information was something that was useful to everybody in the community. And I hope you like it. So guys, if you liked today's episode, please remember to hit that like button. If you are new here, please subscribe. And as always, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I will see you the next time in ARK Survival Evolved on ARK Genesis. Bye, guys! Bye.